Day one at crossroads. How should the multilateral institution be reformed? Hello and welcome. I'm Jelani Tesfaye. This is News Analytica. When the United Nations was established in 1945, there was much optimism that the institution would maintain international peace and security. Various factors explain why this multilateral institution, however, failed to address the ongoing wars in Ukraine, Gaza, and other parts of the world. Today's news analysis will explore this issue in detail and the reform debates surrounding the UN. Stay with us. The ongoing wars in Ukraine and Gaza, which are at center stage in international politics, have shown that the UN is struggling under the weight of a mismatch of organizational functionality and shifting geopolitical realities. The UN Security Council is a prime example of the dysfunction. The Council is the most powerful organ of the United Nations with the authority to make legally binding resolutions to fulfill its mandate of maintaining international peace and security. The Council is composed of five permanent members, China, France, the UK, the United States, and Russia, who have veto power and 10 non-permanent members. However, as many argued, the Council is ineffective enough to address the most pressing peace and security challenges of the 21st century, and that it needs to be fundamentally reformed. It has been more than 620 days since the Ukraine-Russian war began, whereas the ongoing Israel-Hamas war has entered its fifth week. Despite their catastrophic nature, the UN is struggling to navigate towards a resolution on the Gaza and Ukraine wars. Many analysts highlight the nature of the decision-making process and the veto powers in the UNSC as drivers of the failures of the UN. Some analysts point to the nature of the crisis themselves. As UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres readily admits, this moment of international politics is marked by increasingly complex crisis for our world. Others indicate the emergent global transition to a multipolar system which hangs on and is driven by great power competition. In this regard, Guterres underscores that geopolitical mistress is at an all-time high due to the fact that great power competition is in full swing, widening east-west and north-south divisions. The Gaza and Ukraine wars are emblematic of those broader divisions. Despite the existence of a multitude of factors explaining the failure of UNSC, one thing is commonly agreed upon by all, the need to reform the structure and working methods of the UN Security Council. But how it should be reformed is the center of the debate. In particular, there are three reform proposals by the G4 group, the United for Consensus group and the Eslovene Consensus group. The G4 group, consisting of Germany, India, Brazil and Japan, envisages a security council with 25 members. The G4 proposal includes adding six new permanent members, which are the G4 countries, plus two African states to the Security Council. The G4 also wants to add four or five non-permanent members to the Security Council and reform the working methods of the Council. The United Four Consensus called for a 25-member Security Council, which would be achieved by adding no permanent members to the Council, but would rather enlarge the number of non-permanent members from 10 to 20. It has more than 50 members, including Italy, Pakistan, Mexico, Egypt, Spain, Argentina, Turkey, Canada, and South Korea. The Eslovene Consensus represents the African bloc, the AU reform proposal. The proposal consists of an expansion of 11 additional seats, creating two permanent and two non-permanent seats for Africa, one non-permanent seat for Eastern Europe, one permanent and one non-permanent seat for Latin America and the Caribbean, and one permanent seat for Western Europe and other states. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to join us for another edition of News Analytics.